All right, yo, what's going on, UBA? This is the voice of choice himself, Sean Dye Face, and we are here in the city of bowlers, Bowler City in Hackensack, New Jersey. And we got not only tag team action, we got tag team championship action. We have current champions to my left, the dysfunctional dynasty themselves, dysfunctional bowlers. We got Raul Renteria and Brian, you know, he looks a little different today. A little bit, a little shorter, a, lot, a little bit more muscle on me now. <laughs> I've been I've been working out. And you know, and it's not Andy's, but it is Eddie, Eddie Carrero. So you're stepping in. Tell us a little about about that situation, about you stepping in and then um, filling the shoes and holding on the strap and defending the strap today, representing the dysfunctional bowlers. Ah, you know what, man? I'm new with the team. I just want to make sure that team holds on to the title. Stepping in for Brian, I know him and Raul went through a lot to get to the belt. So just trying to make Brian proud. Got to keep them proud. Got to keep the belts at home. Hey, you know what? And you guys know a lot about holding belts, winning belts, and keeping them at home. I mean, you guys in, the, in your organization have held heavyweight, uncapped, and capped tag team, cruiserweight. So looking forward and looking into the future, you guys also have a shot at uncapped. So Raul, tell us a little bit about that and y'all quest for uncapped. Uh, well, it's me and Brian are, are moving up to the uncapped division. So I think right now we're like ranked number four or something. So, um, you know, two more matches and well, yeah, two more matches. We're in a belt match. So, you know, we're going to keep doing what we do. We know each other really, really well. We've been bowling together for like since we started UBA together, like six, seven years. So um, we're going to do what we do and try to get the uncapped belts and, and take it from there. And, you know. We're comfortable with each other. We know each other's game really well. And me and Eddie know each other really well. We've been bowling league together for the past like three years. So we know each other's game pretty well too. So if there's somebody I would be, I'm most comfortable with Brian because I've been bowling him forever. But I'm really comfortable with Eddie. So I think we'll be good. Any strategies that you're thinking about going into? Any ideas who, which one of you two may start? Or are you guys going to fill it out and see what happens during practice? Um, we're going to keep going with the same strategy that me and Brian had. Um, I always start um, the first game, and then he will start the second game. And um, the way we've always run our tag teams, we go well with, with, uh, with the person with the hot hand. Some teams come in here, and they go with a strategy of bowling. Like, they'll bowl three frames, two frames, and they always switch on and off. And it's, it hurts them a lot of times, so somebody will be, like, on three in a row, and they make a, a tag because that's what they do as a strategy, which, to me, it's, it's stupid to do because... Why would you take somebody out that's got four in a row to put somebody else in? You go with the hot hand. That's the way we always bowl, and that's what works for us for a long time. Hey, you know what they say, you fail the plan, plan to fail. So that's good. All right, so, hey, stick with the plan, and you know what? Keep the dynasty going. Dysfunctional dynasty, right? All right. But speaking of dynasties and speaking of lineage and history and stripes in the game, especially when it comes to UBA, I'm talking to three-time former tag team champions themselves. Miguel Carrion, Mark Texador, trailblazers in the division, Latino all-stars, and they are indeed all-stars. Their resume speaks for themselves, and they're trying to add to that and get number four. So, Miguel, you back. You back, you back on the scene. You know, they, they thought you was gone. So, any words right now how, about how you feel about this potential fourth run as a tag team champ? Uh, we feel good. Uh, we bowled them last time in this house. We won. Too bad Brian's not here. Could have taken the belt from him, but, you know. Uh, shout out to Brian Andy. Yeah, pretty much. We were talking about that just now. We're going to give him a shout out. Uh, but, nah, we feel good. We both good here. I always both good in this house. I always love this house, so I feel good right now. I just got to carry Mark because, you know, he's hung over for the night. I mean, you know, well, well hopefully, um, instead of um, taking down shots, hopefully y'all going to be sending shots at this functional bowlers, you know? You well, know, no, no lime, no, just straight shots. I got to keep it down. I got to keep it down. We can't be too loud. There's kids next to us. Gordon said we have to be on our best behavior, so can't be too loud. UBA is for the kids. <laughs> Shout out ODB. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you one time were a double champion. You had cruiserweight. You had tag team all at the same time. You basically, you, you basically were wearing 
almost like a vest of belts. Are you trying to drape yourself, you know, in some hardware again? Of course. Now that they, uh, I'm out of my five-year uh, ban list because of the uh, Gordon rule, but I'm allowed back into the cruiserweight belt. I'll be qualifying in September, and I'm gonna come after whoever has the belt. I need to get my belt back, and we're gonna have both belts at the same time. I like that. I like that. Hey, maybe go for cap. Uncap, it can happen anywhere. But you know what? I'm going to talk to the man of so many words himself, Mark Texador. You know, I've known you for years. You don't say a lot, but when, you, but when you're quiet, your shot screams. So your shot going to be screaming today? We'll see soon enough. We'll see. Hopefully. I mean, it should be a good match no matter what mm -hmm. the outcome, but we're looking to take it down. And any ideas of who y'all think might start, or, or are you guys also going to fill it out, see who gets the hot hand during practice? That's normally the, the idea. Just fill it out, who got the better look in practice, and then go from there. It really doesn't matter who goes first. It really doesn't matter who goes first. It's not about how you start, it's all about how you finish, right? As long as you can pick up my 10 pins, and I'll pick up the 7 pins. All right, well, <laughs> we're going to finish the interview, and we're going to start the action. Hey, what's going on, UBA? This is the voice of choice on that face, and I'm being joined by the man who at times can be salty, but you know what? He's Mr. Pepper, and he is the man of the hour along with me. So I guess we're splitting the hour and a half. How you feeling, Gordon? Doing pretty good. How you doing? I'm a salty pepper. Is that what you're telling me? Salty pepper, but you know what? Salt and pepper had a lot of hits, and hopefully we're going to have a hit today with this tag team championship contest. Well, first of all, I would like to officially welcome everybody to the start of the new UBA season, yeah. September 2023. Mm -hmm. This is our first Northeast title match they're going to be seeing this season. And you really couldn't ask for a better one than this because you have two teams that are storied in UBA tag team title history. Mm -hmm. You have the Latino All-Stars, who are three-time UBA Northeast tag team champions. Three times three time and they're looking for four time and if they get that there would be one away from the record which is five we'll get to that momentarily their opponents dysfunctional bowlers now one of these people you know very well Ru Andrea aka Tao aka former cruiserweight champion aka got to the heavyweight title match which means you know if anybody can do it anybody can do it join up and that's the one thing. That's the beautiful thing about this division. You know, you get a group together, and you see what you could do and see if you could weather the storm together. And you know what? They've been weathering a lot of storms, that being dysfunctional bowlers. And they have been walking through the rain and coming out pretty dry. But you know what? Their resume is not dry. Heavyweight championships, cruiserweight championships, capped, as well as uncapped tag team championships. They have a list of hardware that they have collected, and they are respected because of that. They are what I like to call the dysfunctional dynasty. Well, it is a dysfunctional dynasty, and looking to create another new era of Raul Renteria, the aforementioned bowler that has both the capped and uncapped tag team titles. He's won the capped with Brian Andes. Now, what makes this interesting is that no more Brian Andes. They're over the cap. So now it's a new bowler, Eddie Carrero, who, by the way, this is his first tag team match. So you're going to stick somebody in the fire. This is how you do it. This is when the titles are involved. You cannot get more fiery than this. Yeah, and you know what? <laughs> what kind of fire it is? It's a fire where you're dealing with former three-time tag team champions. Yeah, there's your first tag team match. Oh, by the way, it's against the former tag team titles. Oh, and by the way, if you lose, uh -huh. They're going to take reign number four on your behalf, at your expense. So, yeah, this is sort of slide of uh, Butterflies Freddy Carrero. Now, it looks like Eddie may be going first, mm -hmm. which, yes. again, interesting situation. Now, here's how a tag team match works. As you can see over there, you have one scores, one score. Both people will be bowling together to combine that one score. In the first game, somebody's going to bowl the first three frames. After that, you can tag your partner in. You must tag four times. Okay, Eddie is not striding where Rule is, which would make sense. I would think that Rule may want to get his head examined if he thinks that he was going to have Eddie start this matchup. But everybody will, you will see all four bowlers bowl during this game. You must tag four times. You cannot let tag more, you cannot tag less. Whoever starts the match, must end the match, and here we go. Roll Renteria, first shot strike. 
Now, Renteria has won the title with many different people. He's won with, with Cap with Brian Andes. Uncapped, he's bowled with Dave Nagel Howe. I believe he's also bowled with Matthew Fry Funk yes. in defending the title as well. And in addition to that, him and Brian Andes, from what Rule told me, is number four on the uncapped list. Yes, currently ranked number four. So if he win the title again, he's going to be in another situation where, and I was the big meanie head for doing this, you cannot have both tag team titles at the same time. So if you have capped and uncapped, you've got to give it up. You've got to give one of them up. And how sweet would that be if you were able to hold not two, but four titles? You know, four belts walking into any bowling alley. And right now, that is not a good way to start off a potential fourth title run. Going a little high through the head on lane eight, Miguel Carrion. Maybe getting a little, a little early reaction. Early reaction, a little early butterflies possibly. Now, Latino and Alsters, the dysfunctional bowlers, are no strangers to each other. They bowl in the same district. They've gone against each other more than one occasion for all sorts of belts and titles. And that is really not a good start for Miguel Carrion. At least despair is makeable. 8 1, okay, you got an open. Dysfunctional bowlers take the early lead. And if you're a Renteria, you're thinking in your mind, I'm sure you're thinking in your mind, you know what, if we take a big enough lead, I can get Eddie some frames in there, I can get some of his butterflies out of his stomach. Maybe he'll be galvanized by this. Either way, he'll have a little bit of margin should he want to tag in Eddie in the fourth frame. Indeed, indeed. And Miguel has a couple of frames to figure it out. And let's see if he figures it out before it is time to make the first tag, which is minimum four frames. Correct, yeah. So basically the first three frames, we're going to be seeing Miguel and Raul. In the fourth frame, uh-oh, oh, no, he made the spare. It's going to be like, oh, no, two opens in a row. So in the fourth frame, that's when you can see personnel changes. But right now, Miguel's got to throw three frames. Rule's got to throw three frames, even though right now, if Rule has that same look, he's going to want to keep throwing frames. Indeed. And uh, talking to Raul, <laughs> talk, and talking to Raul, uh, definitely uh, mentioning that you like to go with the hot hand first and my experience in the tag team division is sometimes you can let, let somebody go a couple of frames and ooh, speaking of frame that may be a frame it's got to be a frame he's got to like to forget that's a four nine up there indeed that was that's the san francisco itself san the 49ers have shown up on a saturday and you know what that has got to be a breath of fresh air uh, could potentially be an open but a very makeable spare sliding the four over taking out the nine if that is going to happen and it almost happened but almost is not enough yeah i was saying before that dysfunctional bowlers may have had a chance to get eddie in there with not a lot of pressure oops wrong one pin game right now and uh latino all-stars has the lead Yes, and it shows that all it takes is one frame. I always say in a New York minute, but in a bowler's frame, one thing can change, and a lot of things could be changing for the tag team champions because one good look does not a, a whole game make. <laughs> and as you can see, after one strike, we have a 4-9 lead and a light tickling 7-pin. Pin. So, by the way, World Championship Series, all World Championship Series uh, games or matches go for a game, so this is not a sprint. This is very much a marathon. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed, and it's important to pace yourself, pace and cadence, and you need to speak volumes with every shot, and you need to make sure that your body language as well as your release coincide with one another, or else you will basically make it a four-on-two rather than a two-on-two, -two. that being yourselves against yourselves as well as your opponent. Very true. Very true. A lot of this is is strategy. Now, once the third frame is done, and Miguel Karen right now is going to be finishing it with a two eight ten. You have the option to tag out. I believe for Latino All Stars right now, it's going to be a very very easy option. I see Mark Texador, who is Latino All Stars, other half of their tag team tagging in. The dysfunctional bowlers. We already discussed Eddie Carrero. And he's going to be bullying, tagging it eventually. So now you can tag. Yes, the tag option is definitely there. And the one thing about having a partner who is left-handed, Mark Texador is the lefty, mm -hmm. being that you maybe leave a, a right side corner pin tagging your lefty, and that's a good thing. The one thing, though, is that once you tag in for a second half of a frame, yes. they must start the next frame. Yes. And we see that happening right now. Miguel is tagging in Mark Texor. That is tag number one. 
And again, you have to make four. No less, no more than four. I was actually confused that he actually threw the ball in the first shot. I, I almost would have bet the house that Miguel would have tagged Mark Texor. And Miguel Karen right now does not have a look. Now, remember when I was saying before with the strike tune open that there's a little bit of breathing room to throw in Eddie Carrero. I would have put him in now because I have a lead, even if he opens so what, we're up 20 pens. There's a strike. Maybe now, I believe, may be the time that we're going to see that. No, we're not going to see a tag here. I don't know. Very interesting strategy there. Um, I definitely would have taken advantage of the fact that we have a lead and definitely to see where my partner's head is at being that this is his first match and a major one. Hell, a title offense at that. Um, but you know what? They've been there here before, and Raul has been the mastermind and the driving force behind this functional bowler. So maybe he feels he has the hot hand, and maybe he wants to send an early message. May I, I believe maybe Raul's message is, you know what, I struck in that fifth frame for and, and I'm going to see if I can make that change in lane eight. Clearly he did. There is the double. Now he is putting on some pressure on Latino All-Stars. All-Stars right now in an open to dysfunctional bowlers double. And they're staring at a 50-pin deficit quickly at this point. Seven pin. And a uh, seven pin leave right there. Um, they're attacking the pocket right now. They're, I think they're just trying to get their arms loose. Like you mentioned, marathon, not a sprint. And, and that is tag number two the second tag is made yeah latino all-stars right now they're looking for something they right now they need a gps system at this moment because they have three opens and two marks conversely on the other side dysfunctional bowlers has three strikes and one spare which is why they're going to be up by at least 30 40 pens going to six frame speaking of which second half of game one there's latino all-stars first strike of the game wow Miguel carry on First strike of the game thrown by Miguel, and like you mentioned, the GPS needs to turn on now. They need to get their maps on and find their ways. And if they find their ways, hopefully they will reroute this situation. And even if they don't, get a good look. Sometimes the first game can be practiced. It's good to start 1-0, but even if you're down 0-1, there's still some room for a little error. But hopefully we don't see any error from Spider himself, Eddie Carrero, throwing his first shot as a tag team champion. Let's see how he does. See, now if you notice, he's a lefty, just like Texador. So they both have lefty righty. Here's that first ball. That's come out of pie. Oh, he almost gets away with that seven pin. But that that that's definitely butterfly yaps right there. You get a little bit of the yaps. Oh yeah, well, yeah. That seven pin is yapping, it's talking and it's saying, I'm still here. Uh, let's have a conversation. Now if you notice, they just made a quick, quick change. So we're ruin three right now, so He's going to look to make this fair. He does. Smart tag, if you ask me, because he doesn't have to go after a seven pin. Rules there. Now, both teams have made two tags. Going in the seventh frame, there's a cameo appearance by Eddie Carrera so far in this game. Keep in mind, he's got to make another appearance in this game. Dysfunctional Bowler is right now up by 35 pins. Mm -hmm. Rule looking to keep a strike and keep that pace. There it is. Very good. And Raul, as well as Miguel, started their match. So for the ones who are watching and don't know or are not too familiar with the tag team rule, the ones who start must throw the last shot. Correct. Yeah, if you, if you throw the first ball in the game, you must throw the last ball in the game. If you don't, you automatically lose. If you do not tag four times exactly, you automatically lose. Even if you mathematically have the game down, if you do not follow the tag team protocol, you automatically lose. And we almost saw another 4-9 up there. Oh, out of four nines would have been thrown. I noticed that the balls are reacting. We have a lot of interesting surface choices. We have solid surfaces, shiny surfaces, everyone trying to get a look. And right now, this is the searching game. First game, you don't always expect to win, but you like to. But it's also a chance for you to see potential transitions that may happen in the future. Uh, you see Miguel and Mark basically talking about what's happening, trying to get a little foresight get their get their act together and get a rhythm going and i believe that is tag number, be tag number three, three. texador up texador banging out looks like whatever chat that they that they made is working now latino all source can go out the door for 192. now if dysfunctional bullers go dutch that is a 197. so as long as they keep it clean they will be okay here However, how many times have we seen me saying, as long as they keep it clean, they will be okay here, and then a 710 or a big four stares in the face. Now, Eddie Carrero is up. This is tag number three. 
for dysfunctional bowlers. So getting the tags out of the way, Carrero is here. Now, I'm not sure this is the right strategy, and I'll explain why. He's had one look on lane eight already. He's putting him back on lane eight. That one's a, one's a better shot. That looks like a strike it is. That's a big double. Okay, now you're going to stick him on lane seven. This is his first look there. Mm -hmm. And right now he's trying to get a look at lane seven, and he's right now he's making sure his grip is right so he can keep a grip on the lead that they have at this current moment in time. One, one more strike, and they will not need to mark in the 10th frame to finish out. And that would be a lovely situation. And you know what? It's all sweet until it turns sour. Hopefully it does not turn sour, and it stays sweet for them so they can start off the way anyone would like to start with a 1-0 lead. Latino All-Stars are in danger of being caught in the spider's web, so to speak. Yes, Sean Knight is not the only person that can do bad puns around here. Uh, he webbed up a trio, though. That is a turkey for the dysfunctional bowlers, and that is pretty much night night game one. Night night game one, and what a web that we what weave. A web we weave <laughs> when dysfunctional bowlers do not deceive. Uh, indeed, indeed. And there seems to be pretty good function right now. And the, the dysfunction is coming on the side of the Latino All-Stars who right now are just trying to get this game out the way so they can start anew. I will use this basically to find my GPS, maybe reroute it, maybe even reset it. Maybe they see something that we don't know, or maybe they don't know what they see. We shall see. I don't know if they keep this up at the end of game two. They may be paging old McDonald and asking for a broadside of a barn. Mm. <laughs> so right right now, not a good start for Latino All-Stars. However, as we all know, this is game one. This is best out of seven, four games wins, and this is clearly an area shot. They know that they've lost this game. They're trying to figure stuff out. Now, they do have to tag eventually, unless they don't, in which case, they're going to not win this match, so from everyone, not win this game. So when you look at it, they don't necessarily want to follow the rules and just try to figure out lines and stuff because, again, it doesn't matter. The only way that it matters is if dysfunctional bowler screws up, which is possible. And it has happened. And, and Raul has done this before. As, as he has mentioned to both of us, I was actually there one of the times that dysfunctional bowlers did screw up the tag. So it is very possible. But in this case, it doesn't matter. Latino All-Stars is going to screw this up. So if dysfunctional screws it up, then we have a 0-0 time. They have to replay the game. That is according to WCS rules, by the way. If both teams mess up the tags, then it, the game just gets thrown out. And it's like the game never existed. And then we get more bowling, yay. And then we get bonus bowling. So in this case, we did not have a fourth tag. So Latino All-Stars cannot win this game regardless. Practice bowling. <laughs> that, that is one of the strategies that a bunch of teams do, Latino All-Stars include. Let's get Miguel Caron over here since he's right by the mic. Miguel, what's your thoughts on game one? Because that is definitely me. not a... Game one was all me. It was all me. I, I, I read the back end wrong, so... Uh, the two splits got me, so... It was, and then I switched. I made a bad switch, so I got the next game. But... So I let the ten, let Mark finish out the tenth, even though we DQ. Give him a little practice. What's the this functional bowlers accidentally DQing themselves because they have done that before. Uh, I don't know. This guy never bowled the tag team before. Raul better step in. Well, if he doesn't step in, then um, basically you get you get a mulligan. Oh, is that a mulligan? Yeah, let's go mulligan. Yeah, Raul's gonna come in. Raul, Raul is not that stupid. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's had his moments, but not this one. And, you know, experience right now is the big factor, you know. The game was on the line. I could probably see the DQ, but they had a lead, so they were comfortable. He probably did the same thing I did. Throw the last ball, get a practice shot, and then next game, he has the line. At the end of game one, Dysfunctional Bowlers 225, Latino All-Stars a lot less, 158. Dysfunctional Bowlers starts leads one zip. Now game two is coming up, and Mark Texador starts for Latino All-Stars. Eddie Carrero starts for Dysfunctional Bowlers. I'm going to let you do some play-by-play. -play. i got to go get some matches set up. Well, game one, game one Dysfunctional Bowlers 225, Latino All-Stars 158. Not so great, but you know what? It is a marathon. It is not a sprint. 
even though you're down 0-1, you can still have plenty of fun and get some titles in the process. Hopefully that is not the situation today. And one time and one pin still remains. The eight, the stone eight being thrown here. Uh, Bowler City is known to hook and the lanes are hooking, but it seems like there's a little bit of um, mixed reactions for those who are throwing it. A lot of bowlers here like to attack down and in. It is usually the look. And let's see if Mark Texador has a look at that eight pin. Pretty confident in that. No problem on that. Mark Texador is known for really getting hot. Once he starts to get hot, he's going to strike a lot. And let's just see if Eddie right now is ready for war. He has grenades on his jersey, and let's see if he's ready to explode, or is the situation going to explode in his face? Pause. 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 <laughs> Pause. Uh, so I just I, I just I just got rained with pauses. Shout out to my New York and North Jersey listeners. <laughs> Eddie up on lane eight, and he gets a good mixed reaction. A little bit of DJ action mixes it up, makes them all fall. And this right here is going to be a, a telling game. Eddie right now has to start, and he has to start for three frames. So hopefully he got the butterflies out. He's not new to bowling, but this is a different situation. Not only are you thrown in your first tag team match with your leader and tribal chief, <laughs> <laughs> Roman Renteria over here. Yes, Roman, Roman Renteria <laughs> versus Solo Carrero. Solo! Will Solo Samoan spike it? And no, six? Headpin says, you are not rock bottoming me at this point. I'm still up here. Mm -hmm. yeah, right there. Super kick, I should say, even though that's a different member of the bloodline with a rock bottom. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, circa attitude era, he needs to tune up the band and he needs to pick up a spare. And anytime you have a spare with any back pins, it is very easy to uh, Hassan chop. And let's, and let's just see if he's gonna order, order out and get some chopsticks, or if he's going to take out everything that he's left on there on his plate. Props to the Bugs Bunny uh, Daffy Duck reference, by the way. That's right. And is it hunting season? Oh. No, it's, it's dysfunctional bowler season. However, the spare does mean that Texador can tie it up with a strike or take the lead with a double. So we can, we can ask uh, Mr. Karen, since he's right here anyway, what do you think of Mark's look? Oh, well, Mark got a better look than I do. <laughs> That's true. You know, have a and Mark is up, and I know Mark has got to be heated by last game. A lot of power in there, not enough angle to take out the seven pin. So these civil rights corner pins standing up for their rights. And right now, we're trying to see if he's going to take that one down too. Spare game so far has been pretty good. Got to make sure that it coincides with some strikes. I was going to say, the spare game's been very good. There has not been an unforced error or an open that wasn't a split. And it'll stay oh, like yeah. that. He makes a spare. <laughs> seven pin made. Winning. He's making seven. He's making seven pins. We're good. Seven pin made. Oh, we got a thumbs up. Yeah. Shout out to anyone who may be watching this. And I made reference uh, to the word season. And both of these, both of these teams are in the same division. Ooh. And they will be seeing each other during the UBS season that is going to be starting up very soon. Looking forward to maybe seeing these two teams clash. <laughs> yes, well, we, I, I see exactly what you did there. We will be talking about that later. But right now, and it seems to me like Mark Texter is throwing the ball a little bit too hard. He's not letting it roll versus what Eddie Carrero is doing, which is letting the ball roll. That second shot probably should have been his first ball. Makes a spare, no problem. Now let's see what Eddie Carrero does. Now, Miguel has already given the hand side of, I am not tagging, you're just gonna keep bowling. We're gonna see what Eddie Carrero does. He's gotta throw the third frame. And, and again, you've gotta, these are all the technical things you have to do. And I've seen people accidentally screw up and lose, because again, you've gotta throw that. If you don't, the game's over right there, you lose. And as long as the other team follows protocol, the other team's gonna win. And it doesn't matter what you do. In this case, Carrero right now, 
looking okay. Both lefties, I find this interesting. You have both righties going up against each other and both lefties going up against each other. Indeed, indeed. Kara, right now, that ball looks a little bit high. Nope, seven pin. Not high. Matter of fact, it uh, rolls early, stops early, and we have it. Very early. It stopped very early. Breathe and stop. And the seven pin is what you got. Bring back a little history. It's about the closest game ever that I ever seen for the belt was uh, Gordon and his partner versus Mark and Rudy, where they forgot to tag in and left Mark striking all day, and they they used. The ninth, tenth frame to finish out the four tags. Yeah, wow! And speaking of that finish, they needed all strikes, and they literally struck in each one to tag out. You know what? And it seems like they closed frames, but unfortunately, Eddie did not close that frame. Right, he, you're talking about seven pins being made. Let's go back to this a little bit. You're talking about seven pins being made, and Eddie missed his. Eddie missed his. Mark Tesco got his, and then we see a quick yank from from uh, Rudy, <laughs> not Rudy, from a row Renteria. Yeah. Coming in, that's a very, very quick yank from, um, I believe you said Roman Renteria? Roman Renteria. Roman Renteria with a quick bloodline yank. Yeah, he did not appreciate the patriotism by Eddie as he flagged that one. No, he did not. So let's uh, see right now, because the tides have changed, and let's see if we can take advantage. And much better look, much better shot, much better result. And he, he made the speed go down, too. He made the correct adjustment on that. He's throwing it too fast. He was not throwing it too fast that time. So now Latino All-Stars with their official first lead of game two. Now looking to double up. Double up, putting a little bit of pressure on Dysfunctional if they can. If he doesn't double up, then Dysfunctional Bowlers can take the lead right back with a double of their own. Um, uh, Mark Texador, very experienced bowler. The Texador name has rung bells in the, Bronx, in the Bronx area. And they know what to do. Unfortunately, that was a early read he did minimize the speed but i think he may have tugged inside and right now we have tag number one of game two in this best of seven contest for the northeastern capped tag team championship and let's just see if he caps that off with a close frame and yes miguel right now even though he still didn't look too confident on that one clears it out it's a, it's a spare, and again, these teams know what they're doing. This is classic. If you, if you are an up-and-coming bowler and tag team, if you want to join tag team, this is a very good game to see because you get to see the strategies and what's going on here. And what's going on is a double from Rural Renteria. Dysfunctional bowlers will take the lead back as we go into the second half of game two. Dysfunctional bowlers are already up one zip. And they have a little bit of a lead in game two. Obviously, if you're Latino All-Stars, you really want to tie this one up. You don't want to be down 0-2 to Roman Renteria. No, you do not, because that will be a, a, a spearing effect. <laughs> and right now... He, he is a spearing to try to have no more spiring jokes. And Three right, in a row for DB. And that is no joke indeed. And you can see Raul. Raul's very strategic. He's, a, he's calculating, to say the least. He understands that there's some butterflies. He saw an open frame. He realized what he had to do, and he had to take advantage and then take the reins on the situation and make sure that everything was handled for the next three frames. And Miguel right there matches his strike with a strike. So that, that is Miguel Carrion's, I believe, first strike in this match yes. because the only strike that was thrown in game one was from Mark Texador. Yes, and the only strikes that he threw before that was in practice. And right now it seems that we're not talking about practice. We are practice in the game. Practice. <laughs> and thankfully he, was, he didn't cross over there. He didn't cross over there. Circa AI. <laughs> no, he did not. He did not cross. He did not dribble dribble. Now it looks like he's got a potential, I don't want to say ball chains, but he definitely grab the pad. He's got to make some sort of adjustment here. If he makes the adjustment, this could be a little bit of a firefight coming down the stretch. Oh, he threw it out there. That ball looks good to me. It is. Two in a row for Latino All-Stars. That's their first double of the game. We got ourselves a little uh, match here. And we expected to have a match. Um, Miguel right now, you know, tapping into the Miguel carry-on that I, I recognize and been on the lanes with whether it be in league or in the cruiserweight division, definitely knows how to make an adjustment and knows how to take advantage. Now, the, here's where we have some interesting strategy that's going to have to come up here. There's four in a row for Rudy. I'm sorry, Rudy. Rudy and Taria. However, and here's a big shout out to Rudy. However, and here's a big however here. Both teams have only made one tag. They've got to make three more, and you got three frames left. How to implement those tags is going to almost certainly decide who wins this game. 
Well, we strategy, make strategy, strategy. Here we go. That is all what it's about. It's all about strategy. And I've been very familiar with these strategies myself and my partner when I was on Suicide Squad. We've done the seven squad. We've done the seven, eight, nine, ten rule where if I have the hot hand, make tag a seven. Tag at eight, tag at nine, tag at ten. That they're going to be doing right now, looking for. Oh, that's not a great strategic move. Tag at eight. Yeah, now you're going to have to tag Eddie. Well, you don't have to, but you're going to. Now, Eddie Carrero is the second half of the eighth frame. That means he's got to throw the first ball in the ninth frame. If they forget and Raul accidentally does it, they lose because that is an improper tag. And that's what happens when you don't keep track, but. I believe Raul is keeping track, and I know Mr. Pepper, to my right, is definitely keeping track. And he is on track with a spare right there in the eighth frame. So that has got to feel good, being that he flagged one spare, and I believe he got some confidence back, hopefully. Now, if I'm Latino All-Stars, what I do is this. I do a quick double, double switch, meaning I put Mark Texter on the eighth frame because that's where he's been throwing his strikes. And I put Miguel on the seventh and the ninth, and that leaves my tenth frame open so I can continue either way with that, without being forced to tag immediately. Yes, tags are very important. And as Gordon may mentioned too before, it must be four, nothing less, nothing more. Whoever begins must end. The alpha must be the omega. And right now we're trying to take a mega, mega lead. Well, not mega lead, but make a mega statement yeah. with a potential triple. I'm not sure I would have. I'm not sure I would have done this, but that ball looks good coming up. And mm. No, no. Tempin. So now here we go again. There's that tag. They're doing exactly what this functional bowl is doing. I probably would not have done that, but. I am out there. They're over here. By the way, yeah, my tag team got to the, as, as um, Miguel. Miguel has pointed out, I, did, I was part of tag team. My tag team did get to the finals. I mean, he did lose to Latino All-Stars. But as he said, it was a great match. GB, GB4L? Yep. <laughs> GB4L. In this case, MM4L. Uh, now, again, Mark Textor, he came in second half of the eighth. He's got to throw the first ball here in the ninth before they can even think about tagging. Early, we noticed that he minimized his speed, rolled, and yes, he took your advice from afar, let the ball roll, let the outside work, and that worked, and he carries in the ninth frame the foundation frame. However, what he has done is this. They still have to tag twice. That means Miguel must throw the first ball in the 10th, and then, and then Mark Tuxedo comes in. Now, the other strategy and Miguel talked about this, and it's a very dangerous strategy. If Miguel throws the first ball, you still have to make two tags. If Miguel throws the first ball, that's got to be a strike. Then Mark's got to throw a strike, and then Miguel's got to throw a strike. So you have to double in the 10th frame. Indeed. And you know, sometimes you got to take risk on a skinny branch. Hopefully that branch doesn't break underneath their feet. Yeah, and they're going to do exactly, yeah. That, again, Eddie Carrera had to throw that first shot in there. Now, again, they need two tags. High pressure, high drama in terms of the technicality side of this of this concept. Strategy, 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 strategy. This is what it boils down to in this case. So, they have elected not to switch in gear, which really, I'm not sure if I, again, I'm not sure if I would have done this or not, but Carrero's a lefty. If making the 10-pin would be easier for him to do, so I can understand why they don't want to tag now. Of course, he's got to make the spare, and he does. All over that spare, and Raul tagging in to begin the 10th frame, and this is tag number three. Three, indeed. Keep in mind, Eddie's got to throw the last shot for this to count. So if there's any sort of spare on the board, and fortunately for him there isn't, but if there's any sort of spare on the board, he's going to have to go make it. Now, let's look at the numbers here. If this functional bowlers goes out the door, it's a 225. Interesting. If Latino All Stars goes out the door, it's a 226. <laughs> strategy, strategy. That one, that one pin potential stretch I call the slow knife. Mm hmm. Now let's see what happens here. Big shot for Renneria. Almost certainly wants to get this one, does not. Four pin. Now, again, keep in mind, they've got to make that final tag. And there it is. So they already know. There's four tags. Technical foul, technical foul in the potty mouth. 
Two texts and you're out? Yeah, two texts and you're out. Spider here is looking to make the spare. He will. So they all finish with the 215. Now, this Latino All-Stars will need the first strike. Now, the qu now again, Miguel's got a tag here. He has to, unless they go strike, strike, strike. So Miguel is in. That's tag number three. This ball must be a strike or the game is over, in which case it doesn't really matter because dysfunctional bullets have already tagged there four times, so they're good in the clubhouse. So, double equals a win, strike nine spare equals a tie. Correct. That's one. No cursing there. Let's go is good. Let's effing go. Yep. Now, now here's the question. He's got to throw the last ball. He does not have to throw it here. So now their question is, who feels that they can throw the better shot here? Honestly, I would go with Mark. Interesting. I would go with Miguel. Miguel's got the hot hand here. And this is where, he, this is where he's been bowling. Good point, good point. Count is going to count for a lot here. Absolutely. A strike, they win. Nine spare can be a tie, then we'll go into tiebreakers. Anything less than that, they lose. Dysfunctional bowlers takes games two. Here we go. Looking for a strike for the win. No, nine pin. So now they got to make the tag. And now Mark Taxador has got to shoot on the left-hand side. If he makes a spare, it is a tie. We do two frame roll off. If he misses, and that's game. And, and Miguel said I should have let Mark bowl it. Well, he was right. Mark's going to make this. Okay, at the end of game two, strategy, strategy. 215 dysfunctional bowls, Latino All Stars 214. And uh, strategy here may have played a game, may have played a factor in game two. Wow. A um, little surprised at that miss. And I'm sure that they're surprised as well. Um, we were looking at a potential roll off. I was about ready to walk over there and reset and go, okay, here's how ties work. But again, he had no choice. You had to make the tag there because if you start the mat, you start the game, you've got to end the game. Yes. Uh, we're we're good except rule starts. Wow! If you just joined us, now you're starting to understand how tag team action works. Yes. And we've had one crazy tag team game. So right right now, if you've just joined us, this functional bowlers are bullying against Latino All-Stars. Dysfunctional bowlers are up to zip. And this should be, it should be one to one here, or at least going to a new tiebreaker. Dysfunctional wins game two, 215, 214. And here we are, and I'm gonna poke Rudy eventually. I poke Rudy, oh my goodness. First of all, cool. first of all, wrong poke. Rudy and yeah. well, and second thinking, of all, pause. Well, I'm thinking, no, I'm thinking Rudy Parker. Rudy, Rudy Parker, who ironically enough, is no longer part of Dysfunctional Bowlers. <laughs> I'll be right back. You take over momentarily while I get the uh, first names correct on all the bowlers. All right. No, I don't. The bowl's now starting. But I'm still getting, getting another match going. All right. Well, current recap. First game was dysfunctional bowlers over... <laughs> Wow, over a Latino All-Stars, 225 to 158, game two, and a uh, shocking ending. Dysfunctional Bowlers, 215 to Latino All-Stars, 214 due to uh, an unfortunate nine pin, I'm sorry, four pin miss. That I'm sure is not sitting well with uh, Mark Texador or Miguel Carrion. Um, that can be a little debilitating to the psyche, but it could either fire you up or it could either make you go down lower. And I don't think that's going to happen. I think we may have a fight back. And right now he's got he's got to be an all-star. Got to be an all-star. You got to punch back. Yes, that was not a good way to finish. And that has to get, that might get in your head, but you cannot let it get in your head. Latino you know, All-Stars is a veteran, veteran team. I do not expect them uh, to let this affect them. If anything, it's going to tick them off and they're going to bowl better than what they did the first two games. This could light a fire behind the proverbial fanny, so to speak. Indeed, indeed. And you have to have short-term memory in terms of those um, debacles. And right now yeah, we are seeing some of, that, some of that good old fire that I'm used to seeing uh, circa ballpark lanes and throughout the Bronx watching these two, these two gladiators fight it out and throw punches. I remember 
there was one game that Scott Santos and I should have won to close out our match, and we didn't, and we got really annoyed, and we threw the front nine in the next game to close the match out. So, no, sometimes, and again, if you've been there, and if you lose a game that you think that you would have won, and one of my favorite quotes of all time is, adversity d does not build character, it reveals it. Uh, you get mad, and when you get mad, that means, okay, it's, it's time to bleep and go. Yes, indeed, and you know what they say about pressure. If you either get coal, you can get a diamond. Yeah, for us, we, we got diamonds when we were bowling. Again, we got all the way to tag team title match. And speaking yeah, of we, we were a very, very good team. Shout out to Scott Santos. Speaking of diamonds and Hall of Famers, um, I remember being in a number one contenders tag team match against Carla Pereira. <laughs> yeah, Carla Pereira mm -hmm. and her partner. Secret Society, yes. yes Shout secret. out to Secret Society. It was no secret the way that we forced the game seven from being down 0-3, and Carla decided to throw the front, the front seven on us. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, good bowlers do good things, and, and that's what we do around here. So Latino All-Stars right now, Miguel carry on with the first non-strike of this game. Again, he's got to make a spare, and he will. Oh, no, he won't. Oh, wow. They, they may have lane eight haunting them in their dreams this evening between the missed four pin and that. Yeah, and eight has not been great. And what I'm seeing right now is the frustration taking over and those first three shots, uh, even though the first two were strikes, they were a little rushed. And as you saw, Miguel took a little breath there and took his time on that one. And being a bowler, and you being a bowler as well, you know how it can be. You're frustrated, you go off of adrenaline and off of F, take F that breath. last shot. <laughs> gotta take, even if it's mentally, if you're sitting down, you gotta take a deep breath. And that's four in a row for dysfunctional bowlers. And all of a sudden they've got a 27 bordering on 37 pin lead, which is what you get when you throw the front four. When are we gonna see Eddie Carrero in this game? You call the frame. When are we gonna see Eddie Carrero show up? We're gonna see Eddie Carrero in frame seven. You know what, I'm gonna agree with you there. If Rule is lying and he is, he may want to bury Latino All Stars. See them, see them, show, uh, see them throw a couple of non strikes and then throw Eddie Carrera in there. And right now, dysfunctional bowlers front five. Neither team has made a tag. This this may be when we see a tag, maybe. And what we saw at the end of the last game and results of that is once you see a situation where you feel you might have messed up and caused a potential tie or lose, and then you get gifted the game. It does something to you. It gives you what I call a surge. Yes. It gives you new life. And then all of a sudden, it feels like it's game one all over again, and you have a fresh look. And right now, it seems like they're playing catch up. And like they say in ultimate fighting or, or combat sports, you're fighting from the bottom. And even though you can still knock out from the bottom, it's very hard to get a good punch off. Uh, you're absolutely right on that, and and you're absolutely right. When we when we have we're gifted a game that we probably should not have won, and we got it anyway because a mistake made in that frame. You better believe that we were out there because part of what we wanted to do, as you've said, we wanted to kill the other team's morale, and we wanted to take their soul from them using a Mortal Kombat Shang Tsung reference. A little, little bit of a soul train, and more more often than not, it worked, and that's exactly what this functional bowls are trying to do right now. And right now, they need to overcome this adversity. You know, right now, they want to chase four, and they want to avoid losing four games. And, oh, we got to trip, 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 trip. Yeah, being down 2-1 isn't terrible because you can even it up. Being down 3-0, that means you there's four games left. You've got to win all of them. Well, you know, they say donuts sometimes can be the food of despair. And I'm sure that they don't want to dine on any donuts. And, whoa, hold up. Wait a minute. Well, they're dining on a 10 pin. Let's get a lefty in it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Eddie Kerr is coming up in the sixth frame, except you're right. He probably would have shown up in the seventh. I indeed would have did the same thing, especially if I got the hot hand. I would have gone all the way to seven or gone until I just couldn't go anymore or until I need the four. Uh, no question about it. In our match against Tribe Called Nest in our number one contenders match, uh, I had the luck. He got it. I had the look, Scott Santos stuck me in there, I threw the front six, and then left the seven pin in the seventh, and he picked it up. And but that by that point, I had the front six, it was game over. In this case, it's not necessarily game over. I mean, it is a 40 pin lead. However, Latino All-Stars is the team with the strike. Eddie Crow's still, they still got to make some marks and close them out. No, they definitely As we all do. know, a funny thing sometimes can happen on the way to the paint window. Well, we saw a great example of that in the last yeah, game. In the last game. You're thinking four pin, okay, let's 
Four pin. Okay, let's set up for a tiebreaker. Nope. Flag right. Saying. There's no such thing as an easy spin. There is not. We have a seven pin, and I see another tag coming in very quickly, and there it is. Yes, and you could tell that um, that Raul has definitely um, got the steering wheel in terms of guiding how this situation goes. He's taking it by the horn. Roman Renteria. Yes, indeed, and he is being a tribal chief indeed. He, he has the experience in almost every division except Walter Waite. <laughs> Shout out to Julio. Uh, no, no, uh, Dysfunctional Bowlers does not have a World Away champion. They do not have a Vixens champion. They have more than enough good female bowlers to make a run at that Vixens title. Might be giving them some ideas. Okay. Let's see, no to see if Mark has an idea. And right now, the frustration is right now, it's all over his face, it's all over the body language. And we could potentially see a an 03 deficit. Well, yeah, Latino All Stars is running out of frames. Running out of frames, um, the margin of error is closing and closing quickly. Well, they'll, they'll make the spare, except you, you know if this does go the way that it's looking right now and Dysfunctional Bulls wins, you know darn well they're going to look at that 10th frame in game two and be like, okay, that was the turning point in this one. Gail okay, right now looking to close up shop, doesn't do it, 10-pin. Right now, the pins are not in agreement with, with the mission. And right now, it seems like the mission and the movement is moving in the direction of dysfunctional bowlers at this current time. That is how it's looking. You know, tag, quick tags here. This is tag number three to Texador. Again, that's what you want. That's how you want to set this up. Looking to make the temp in here. Ooh. And he will. You know, the funny thing is this Latino All-Stars before the third frame has only had one unforced error, and unfortunately for them, it came in the 10th frame of game two. Now they've had another one with Miguel. Carry on, and you can make the argument that that cost him game three. Ooh, fast eight. Fast eight. And speaking Wait of fast. Right now, they got two more tags that they have to make. Yeah, speaking of fast, it is um, quickly and in a fast way. Seems like dysfunctional bowlers are going to jump up three games to zero, potentially. Again, that is only potentially. It is not necessarily, you know, the end all be all. But if they well, finish I mean, all games, it could end all. Zero three. I've come down from zero three. The the very first match that Scott Santos and I had, we couldn't do anything right. We fell. 3-0, and then we just said, if we're going to lose, we're not losing like this. Then we took game four, game five, game six, and then came down to game seven, and we both uh, threw strikes to close out. You can come back from 0-3. It's not the easiest thing or the most fun thing in the world to do, but you can't come back from it. No, this is tag number three. That's correct. Uh... He tagged in the spare in the second frame and threw the first ball in the eighth. So that tag is correct. And Miguel himself is not is not a stranger to coming back from these kind of deficits Absolutely. as well. Miguel is checking in on the tag counts, and to be quite honest, to be quite honest, as we've mentioned before, dysfunctional bowlers have screwed up on the tag counts before. They did not screw up this time. And that definitely also will be an unforced error. That would be a massive unforced error. So both teams right now with three tags. Uh, one more to go for both teams. And right now, just trying to search for some kind of rhythm right now. They don't, it seems like their steps are off. And the DJ's playing the music, but it seems like the music is not, is not to their liking right now. They are the not DJ dancing. The DJ is not playing the song list that they've asked to be prepared for. Not at all. And the playlist right now and the battery life is shortening. Playlist right now, I, I think it's. I, now I made the spare. Playlist right now, it's, it's starting to turn into Donna Summer's last dance because right now they, they've got one last dance in game four, and if they don't pick up the pace, it's going to be night night, and we're sh shutting down the disco. And oh, hey. on the Perfect. Jersey side. That, there's your line. <laughs> <laughs> So Miguel said, yeah, I'm just showing Mark where to throw the ball. Indeed, and we, and we cross Ooh. over here. And they say Brooklyn over here. Ooh. I still say Jersey. Jersey. I, stay, I stay true to my roots. Stay true to your roots, too. 
I was born in Brooklyn. That's right. So I crossed over to Jersey. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Let's see if he pays the toll again. That's a gross little toll you got there, 4 7. Yeah. So Latino All Stars will finish with anywhere between 186 to 188. Again, dysfunctional bowlers, as long as they do not screw up the tags, they will be okay. So Miguel did ask me whether or not uh, they did tag mid-frame, and, and they did, but uh, Raul needed to shoot the eighth, and he, and he did, and then Eddie shot the ninth, so they're okay. As long... As long as... As, as long as... Raul throws the last shot, because they still have to make that one tag. And they're still chatting, and I do not know why they're still chatting. They still have to finish out the game. Ooh. And that right there, that little momentary distraction, could maybe cause a um, potential mistake. And this phone... And dysfunctional bowlers right now looking well, to be like, in the driver's seat. The fill ball, so so he knows what he knows what he's doing. Unless Eddie Carrero is silly enough to try to make a spare and miss. Speaking of which, well, there's a seven pin. Ooh. Now here's the interesting thing: if he goes for it, no, he is tagged. Towels in his hands. Yeah, the towels in the hands. They're already tagged. <laughs> Uh, Miguel and, says, and, you don't want to go for it. I believe in you. And, Miguel, and, and he goes, I don't. Miguel displaying a lot of faith in his partner to make the spare. Yeah. All right, you, you mean Miguel is showing no faith in Raul's partner to make the spare? No, oh, plenty of faith. He believes in him. <laughs> you got to believe. Yeah, the, the, the inside joking track is, is everybody knows that the person that starts the game has got to end it. So if Eddie would have gone for the spare and missed, then the Latino All-Stars would have won that game because improper, in, improper tagging. So the end of the game, Dysfunctional Bowlers 234, Latino All-Stars 188. Dysfunctional Bowlers up three zip. There is four games left. Latino All-Stars must win all of them. The margin of error is zero, a.k.a. El Cheapo. Start us off on game four, sir. Well, game four, here we go. Couldn't ask for more. Uh, Latino All-Stars on... They're, they're, is the bar open? Well... <laughs> Latino All-Stars in their quest for four may receive four, but not in the way that they envision. They may... Yeah, they may be, they may be uh, getting connect four, but they may be getting connected. Well, here's one thing... Or disconnected. To, well, let's make a connection with this. There's many situ situations and scenarios. You could see, all right, well, I'm frustrated. I want to go home. You may see the winners of three games, that being dysfunctional bowlers, get a little lax in their lead and throw shots with not as much gusto, thinking that it's already won. But we already know. The one thing that lies for sure is that nothing is for sure. We have seen classic walkdowns. Shout out to that classic team. And shout out to Mr. Sean Hanley, Hall of Famer Shiz. You could see a classic walk down, or you could see a walk out, walking out disappointed. Dysfunctional bowlers right now in the driver's seat in terms of defending their titles and moving forward to their next opponents. Or we could see an epic comeback. There's no telling what could happen. And that is exactly what I'm talking about. High on the head, but no split, only leaving a 4-7. 4-7 should be makeable, but it's never safe to assume what is makeable and what is not makeable. Anything can happen. And for Latino All-Stars sake, they're hoping that things happen and shift in their direction. Here at Bowler City, Hackensack, New Jersey, thank you for joining us and watching this. And that is exactly what we were making mention of before. And it's funny because that same mistake happened to Mark Texador on the same lane. Lane eight. <laughs> lane eight. <laughs> lane eight has not been great for all participants, but also the lefties. We've watched the lefties struggle today. So for all those that have the, the notion that it's easy on the left, things are not easy on either side of the lanes unless you make it easy. No matter where you are, no matter what side, no matter what hand you use, you have to do one thing and one thing only, throw it better. And we're going to see if... All competitors can throw it better. 
if Latino All-Stars throws it better for the next for the next four games because they have to win four in a row. There's no more room for error. That that window is closed. Right now, they need to close every frame and they need to go hard or literally go home or to the bar. And let's just see if right now Mark Texador in lane eight can raise the bar and be an all-star. And hey now, all-star hit. Unfortunately, the seven pin does not lay down and again, Lane eight has not been giving it up like lane seven. Lane seven has been pretty easy pickings, but lane eight needs dinner. They need dessert. Lane, lane eight needs a couple of dates before it lays down. Fires away and takes out the seven pin and two closed frames for Latino All-Stars. Dysfunctional bowler starts off with an open. It is never safe and it's never good to be lax once you have a 3-0 lead. So, Gordon, I was making mention to many, di to many different scenarios. Oops. Yes, to Oops. many different scenarios first that can happen. unforced error by dysfunctional bullies exactly. this whole entire match, in, by the way. But in the first frame, not the last. That is Oh, you went there, did you? Oh, seven pin. Seven pin not laying down, man. It is, it is really being... Um, it's, it's, it's been, been it's, feisty. It's been a little feisty. Been a little, seven and four pins today have been very feisty. Exactly, man. So assuming that Texas makes a spare, Latino All-Stars will be up going into the SAG segment. And again, this is a game Latino All-Stars must, must, must win. Yes, it is a must-win situation. And I may mention to this, whenever you have situations where you have a big lead, any, any single time, you know, you can see a lot of different scenarios. You can see your opponent basically just have the wind taken out of their sails mm -hmm. and want to just go home. You can see the team that's up or the bowler that is up basically get a little lax and think it's already over. And then before they know it, they're staring at a walk down, a classic walk down. And, we, and we've seen this happen before. I mean, for, for, for our team, every time we got to three wins, anytime we were up 3-1, it was over. And we made sure. It's like we, we've got to lock this down. Now, again, a little bit of yippee from any curl, maybe, because, again, you should really be able to make a two-pin spare at this level, or at least not flag them both. The right frame coming up, if he gets a strike, oh, yeah, that's high, that's good. That held a little bit. That held for, that a, for a long while. Now, now the margin is one pin. Now we're in the fourth frame. You can tag if you want. Here's the interesting thing. If you remember at the beginning of the game, quick hook, quick hook, quick hook. Roman Renteria, quick hook. This time around, he's letting him play a little bit. Except I'll say this, if he doesn't strike here, don't be surprised if Roman Renteria comes in and says, I got this. Yeah, that's one thing we've seen. We have seen no hesitation for tagging after an error, especially when the tags are available to be made. From Raul's experience, he, he takes control of the situation. He makes sure that he understands what the situation is. A couple of darts being thrown, and oh, the darts work. I, I have no idea what that sort of that was the gorilla dart. I don't uh, know. It's like like yeah, Zangief arms. He just thought it's. <laughs> We're gonna use all the video game, old school video game references. Zangief from Street Fighter One to Eighty, and basically he threw the hands in the air, waved them like he just don't care. Dart, and it did work because we have a four six ten. Unless he makes a spare, and he does not. Yeah, you know, with those Angief arms, the genesis of this game was the open and the fourth frame also with an open. So right now we have an open sandwich. Yeah, we, we have an open sandwich. And, and now let me ask you this question. Should Roman Renteria have come in in the fourth frame instead of letting it Eddie Guerrero play? Because I'm starting to think, yeah, I probably should have because he's going to let Latino Astros get right back into this one. Miguel Carrion, by the way, quick tag in from him. Well... So there's, so, so uh, there's two quick tags over there by Latino All-Stars because Miguel just said help. Yeah, right now they're being very carnivorous. They smell blood in the water, and they're looking to feast right now. They need to feast, and it's either feast or famine, and the famine would be if they lose this game and then have to go home. They have to go home very, very quickly. Yeah. Texoda right now looking to make the spare and make sure that that tag was worth it, and it was. Indeed, and it seems that... Three games later, both individuals have loosened up. And right now, they they got to keep it tight even while staying loose. Oh, absolutely. If you're Latino All-Stars right now, your, your game has been the grind at this point. 
which hasn't been effective against all the strikes and dysfunctional voices we're throwing at you, you've got to make sure that you force him to get back into it by caring and not by making stupid mistakes on your end. That ball looks good and ended. I, 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 I. And just what I said, you can't afford to make silly mistakes like that. Hey, look at what we got here. Two, four, six, ten. Who yeah. do we appreciate? Mm. Well, hopefully we will not be appreciating anything because if he does not make this, then it ends the momentum of the clean frames. Now, this is extremely makeable. It is makeable. Yeah. It is absolutely makeable. If you put it to the left side of the two, just a little bit of a nudge, you should be able to get everything. Uh, that doesn't hook from there. Does not hook from the left gutter side. And again, you got to get at least two here. Six, zero, and all of a sudden, a mark puts this functional bowlers back in the game. We'll run to Ray right now, looking to give BB the lead. Seven pin. And we have a very interesting situation. So, Latino All Star still has a lead. Well, well, not not if he makes a spare. Not if he makes a spin. Hopefully, I didn't speak anything bad into existence. We're really good at doing that, by the way, if you've noticed. We're really good about speaking bad things. In yeah, you, rub, you rubbed off on me. Yeah, exactly. Both. The dark cloud, the dark shondite. And he makes a spare. Gordon, Barely. Gordon Pepper known as the dark cloud because, unfortunately, two things. Number one, if there's a run of strikes, I'll usually be there to break it up. And number two, if I say, well, as long as he doesn't do this, and then he'll do it. Just like, oh, yeah, game two. Right you, you owe them some shots. Uh, yeah, I owe them something. Right now, a one-pin game by dysfunctional bowlers, and they have the one pin. So let's see what we have here. So Raul Renteria has tagged in once, so they still have three tags to go. That is tag number three very quickly. Yeah, four or five. Yep, that's correct. That is tag number three. Very quickly for Miguel Carrion. A Latino also has uh, one more tag after this, and the pins go down. Ooh, now, martial arts kick Cobra Kai. Trying to think if he, that's sort of like a Johnny Cage Mortal Kombat sort of kick right there. Indeed it was, and right now no split, and because a split would have indeed been a Johnny Cage that low blow. Been, yeah, that would have, would have been another move from Johnny Cage. I believe, uh, based on the sweep by Tchaikovsky, would, would have been that one. And if you understand the reference, you understand the reference. Dun, dun, da dun, 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 Strike. Ooh, trip, 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 tripping up, tripping that for a pain. Don't hurt yourself. Miguel, Miguel, you're not that young anymore. You can't be kicking too much. Oh. Oh. Very quickly, Tempen. And yes, ooh, the 10 pin right now is being a friend to the Latino All-Stars. Um, right now, who's not feeling like an All-Star right now, Mark Texador. Um, he's struggling to get comfortable and really let the ball flow. Um, adversity sometimes comes, but you know, it can create a sad end well, or a beautiful story. Let me explain something. This is game four, mm -hmm. and they've already made three tags. Mm -hmm. So Mark Texador only needs to show up in the 10th frame on the last ball, in the fill ball. Now keep in mind, the next time that they put Mark Texador in, that is it. No more giving a carry on. Mark Texador's got to finish the game. That being said, what you said, I believe, is going to be very accurate, which is you will not see Mark Texador again until the 10th frame in the second game. Mm -hmm. And if Latino All-Stars feel like they need to do what they need to do, you're not going to see him because hopefully by that point, according to them, it won't matter. Mm -hmm. That's their goal. Dysfunctional bowlers obviously want to throw some strikes up on the board and make it happen and put some pressure on Latino All-Stars. That being said, Carrera's got to throw this in the eighth, and you'll see an almost certainly very quick hook from Rural Renteria because they still have two more tags to go. Eighth frame here coming up. That ball looks good. It is. And he definitely felt good with that one. So what we've noticed here is very interesting. The righties are looking a way more comfortable than the lefties today. And it is strange because usually, forget Bowler City one second, usually in most houses, everybody whines lefties. Oh, the lefties are better. Lefties are better. Lefties are struggling today. Yeah. Righties, not so much. And speaking of which, there's a righty now, right now looking for three in a row. Doesn't make it. Now, this is where it becomes interesting. If he tags Mark Textor in, they will be out of tags. Textor has got to, fin got to finish it out the rest of the way. Yeah, and you actually saw Miguel pondering on the tag. Miguel's pondering, and if you notice Mark Textor, he is not moving from his chair. 
Now he's moving a little bit, but he's not getting, oh, now he's getting out of the chair. I think maybe me chatting here again. If Mark comes in now, that's it. No more Miguel carrying for the rest of the game. And I think that's what Rule is coming over here to ask me that question. Did Miguel throw the sixth frame, his partner through the fifth frame? And then this is tag number four, so they're now done. Miguel came in the fourth, first frame. Mark came in the fourth, second frame. He threw the fifth and sixth. Uh, so, yeah. So yeah, now, it's now it's all Miguel. So that's their fourth tag. They're done. So there's the tag, and Raul came over to confer with me, just like everybody else is conferring with us because they both know we're taking control. Uh, Raul is correct. This is their fourth tag. It is Mark Textor. You want to confirm that? Mark Textor the rest of the way. So no more Miguel carrying in this match. If they let, if the Latino All Stars win or lose this game, it will be because of Mark Textor either way. And there's a big strike. Very good. And what we saw there is what I was actually thinking in my head. Taking a couple of steps inside to the right from Miguel, I'm sorry, from Mark, and letting the ball roll, paying a little well, whatever wet to dry that there is. Because down and in has been a lot of over-under reaction. Either too much speed from the outside, not reading, too slow from the outside, reading early, and that red just in time to carry the 10 pin, and he spanks the machine with the towel. And I don't know if the machine liked it or not. I didn't see any consent. I think the machine enjoyed it a lot. It I, I could make a huge joke here, but I'm not. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not. I'll talk to you about it, what I was going to say later, but I do think the machine enjoyed it. But here, here's the game plan here. It is the 10th frame. Mm -hmm. uh, dysfunctional bowlers are up by two pins. If they go out the door, it's a 2-11. The best that Latino All-Stars can do is a 2 9 So strike, strike, nine. Game over, match over. That is one. Now keep this. It's not over yet. Dysfunctional Bowlers needs the next one, and they need a nine count. Again, keep in mind, Eddie Carrero's got to throw the last shot. So if Eddie Carrero does what he did in the first frame, there's life for Latino All-Stars. Mm. Especially, you're giving Eddie Carrero the chance to end the match. However, second ball here. Ball's got to be a strike. No. Oh. No, sir. Not only is it not a strike, it is not good pin count. Mm. Way, way to buck it up. So, needless to, yeah, he, way to bucket up is right. And this is important. Pin count here is important. And as you can see immediately, Eddie Carrero, he's got to throw this. Now, if he makes, let's see if my math is right here. 199, so that means, mm -hmm. wait, oh, sorry, 195. Mm -hmm. That's not sense of four tags. That's from three. Hmm? Because they tagged in the seventh. And then he just, while well, we went double double, and then and they just tagged him right now. I'll check on the playback. That's why I got, that's the same thing I got. No, 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 no. Eddie Carrero is the seventh frame, and then Raul came in on the eighth and ninth. Eighth, and then that's the last one, so it's oh, four. Oh, okay. Okay. They're good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mark Texter has got to have this one of the game's over. And he does it. That's a big strike from Textor. Here we go. This, this is going to sound familiar, except it's a, it plays a little bit better for Latino All-Stars. A strike is a win. A nine spare is a win. A nine open is a tie. But he must get nine here. Anything less than nine, it is game, set, match, dysfunctional bowlers wins. Actually, no. Eight spare will also be a tie. I take that back. But it's got to be at least an eight. And it's not, and that is game, set, match, dysfunctional bowlers wins. Wow. And an unfortunate ending uh, to what have been a great story for Latino All-Stars in the quest for their fourth tag team. Um, they do not get four runs. Unfortunately, they have lost four games. And this will be the end for today. But I certainly doubt it will be the end for their potential tag team title run. And I'm sure that this will definitely light a fire under them going to next match. Um, congratulations to Dysfunctional Bowlers defending. At the end of game four, 197-191, Dysfunctional Bowlers wins 4-0. And uh, if, if you're uh, Miguel Cara and you want to make sure that Mark Texador is not running himself over with his own car at this point. Oh, uh, or running anyone else over. Or, but, running um, else over. or running you or me over in the 
Well, but I know Mark, I know right now he's not feeling too good about this. Uh, I feel um, bad for anyone who he's going to bowl against in league because someone may get uh, <laughs> an, 800, an, an 800 shot on him. All right, uh, let's, let's have a chat. Yes, and we are going to be chatting with the, and still, Northeast Cap Tag Team Champions. What's going on? We're going to get y'all on camera. All right, what's going on, Sean Knight Basin? <laughs> what's going on, Sean Knight Basin, Voice of Choice here, and we had just finished watching the reigning, defending, and still Northeast Cat Tag Team Champs. As I get, I get the honor of the towel. I, I get, I get a brush with greatness as he defends, along with not Brian Andes, but Eddie Carrero. How did it feel in your first title defense? With dysfunctional, with dysfunctional bowlers getting thrown into the fire, getting getting sautéed, and coming out okay and not fully filleted. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling grateful that Raul carried me this one, and I hate giving him credit. <laughs> Just like everybody in the UBA hates giving him credit. This is true. Yeah, so it, you know what? Uh, he carried me. You know what? I, I threw some good shots, but there were a couple of bad shots that... Uh, that shouldn't happen, but uh, you know what? We persevered, made it through, made the shots when we needed to make them, and you know what? Feels good. I feel like I earned it this time. I didn't just get handed it. I was able to defend it, win a match, so you know what? Feeling a little bit more confident now, a little bit more comfortable with it. Feeling comfortable going into your next title defense? Yes, absolutely. All right, and someone who's definitely familiar with title defenses as well as today, Raul, the rain continues, and your rains continue over and over, and you've been roaming all over the place. So, so how do you feel right now being the tribal chief of your camp, the camp of dysfunction? Just keep doing what we're doing. You know, I'm happy that, um, you know, I know Eddie was going to have kind of a, an up and down day because it was his, he was a little, I know he was a little nervous coming in because it was like he was thrown into it. You know, he, he didn't feel like he was a champ until he was to be able to defend it. So I know he was going to have a little butterflies. I know he was going to be kind of up and down a little bit. So. I try to just, you know, be a teammate and try to help him out as much as I could and, and talk to him and try to, you know, ease the nerves a little bit. And, you know, he made some shots when we needed them. You know, he struck when we needed them. And, you know, it's, it works out great when we had a lefty-righty combo. You know, he goes in for my 10 pins, I go in for seven pins. It makes things a lot easier for us in that aspect. And I think he's just going to get better because now that he's got that first match out of the way, now he feels like a champ. Now he feels a little more comfortable. Kind of, he's never. I don't think he's ever bowled tag team WCS before. I don't think he's ever bowled any WCS before. Mm. But so now he kind of like got that out of the way. His first match. Now he can probably feel a little more relaxed, more loose. And now he knows how the tags work. Now he knows. Now we're now we're starting to build a little chemistry. So we should feel a little more comfortable going into the next game, mm. next match. You know, of course, towel comes through and does what it does. Always carries the team and an in integral part of this of this team always been so are we are we looking at an item the first item to be inducted into the hall of fame Could be. you think the towel may get inducted before 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 the bowler himself i think so i think so because more people know the towel more than me so would you ever be opposed to uh, maybe putting your your towel up for grabs oh that's a lot to ask for i don't know about that one but it would be interesting, though. <laughs> so you don't tug on Superman's cape and you don't touch Raul's towel? Is exactly. that what it is? Exactly. Or in other cases, um, in the past, a rosin bag. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Bowlers know the reference. And you know what? Referencing uh, tag teams and tag team titles. Like we mentioned before, rank number four, going for the uncapped. Um, how are you feeling right now on not only your title run now, but your potential title run in the future? That would be fun. It would be fun to, to, to be a dual champ again. Um, I was a, a, a triple champ at one point when I had the uncapped, the cap tag team, and the cruiserweight belt. Um, so that was kind of fun. Um, it would be fun. The only, part, the only bad part is I would have to drop one of the titles and have somebody sub in for me for one of them, which kind of sucks, but I mean, I guess that's the rules. But we'll cross that road, you know, when we get there. And we, we could have been anywhere in the world, but we were here in Bowler City. And um, it was a sight to see 4-0, dysfunctional bowlers over Latino All-Stars. That's it for the tag team. But you know what? Until next time, 
make sure you stay stay good, stay fine. We've been here since 2009, and we're still on our grind right here. UBA all day, where champions lie.